protection is important. And I'm not just talking about protection in life or whatever, but I'm talking about protection in chemistry. See, what if you want to prepare this compound, which is really useful in a lot of chemistry applications and shit. So to make this compound, you have to start with this and this. Oh my god, T drawing takes a lot of time, but anyways. So you have to actually start with these two starting materials. So the good thing about this chain right here, this carbon chain, is that this bromine is really electron negative, electron negative. And what that just means is that it will want to take electrons as much as possible. So if you don't know what a bond is, it's just electrons being shared among like elements. So for example, the carbon here and the bromine here, they share electrons so that's essentially what a bond is but the thing is because bromine is really electronegative it wants to take that the electrons from this bond for itself so you actually have you end up with this kind of notation right there so the arrow is just coming to the bromine signifying that the electrons here are going to the bromine and at the same time this molecule right here contains nitrogen which in a lot of cases usually has free electrons that are available for bonding. So as bromine takes this these pair this pair of electrons, this pair of electrons can attack this so that this chain could oh my god, it's so hard to zoom out. Fuck that. And then you would end up with this chain. The thing is that what if your nitrogen thing group over here is a little bit more complex. So what if it looks like this? So actually preparing this chain with this kind of imidazole, which is just this thing, is useful. Again, it's useful for a lot of chemistry applications and stuff. But what if you have another part of this imidazole that contains a nitrogen, which as I said earlier, it can attack the chain right here. Oh my god, it's it's a horrible zooming out on this thing. What if this would attack this instead of this? So what do we do? That's where the protection and deprotection thing comes on. So before we directly add the imidazole, the whole thing right here, with the alkane chain, with the bromine, what we have to do is we have to protect this imidazole. So how does that happen? So you can start with this. Oh my god, zooming in is horrible. I hate this so much. And yeah, you're going to start with your alkyl chain. And then you're going to start with... So instead of having the target group placed here initially, what you want to do is place something that's really unreactive. So one of these compounds could be a thalamide, which is another weird ass name in chemistry, but it looks like this. Oh my God, did I forget how to draw this motherfucker? Oh my God, no, it's fine. Okay, yes. So this is what a thalamide looks like. So instead of the NH2 that I showed you earlier, it looks like this. So this way, if you add this compound with the chain with this because this group is very unreactive we know that it's only this nitrogen that's going to attack this chain so how do we get to the original chain that we wanted in the first place with the NH2 so once we form oh my god I hate zooming out of this application so what if we get this so we would finally get this compound oh my god I'm zooming out this compound and in order to replace all of this with just oh my god my, my drawing is horrible with just this you add something to this and most of the time it's something called a hydrazine monohydrate but what that just means is that it looks like this I actually don't know how to draw it but it's this chemical right here so if you add this monohydrate to this 
thing that you prepared, you get the original chain that you wanted in the first place. So that's the deprotection part. You protected the chain with this thing, with this thalamide, and then later on you get your the thing that you originally planned to have in the first place, and that's the deprotection part when you add this monohydrate. 